Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us tonight in the first session of the new series, Dardashat, by the Arab Culture Club. My name is Reem Fayyad Abdel Samad, and I'm a founding member and the president of the Arab Culture Club in New Brunswick. And I'm also a proud member of the local New Brunswick band, Arabica, dedicated to sharing classical Arabic songs. So for those of you who are not familiar with the Arab Culture Club, it's a not-for-profit organization established a year and a half ago on a mission to provide an environment that encourages all those interested in Arabic language to experience and share Arabic culture, language, history, and heritage as a beautiful element in the Canadian fabric. What is Dardashat? In Arabic, the word Dardasha means a friendly conversation or an informal chat. In plural, it becomes Dardashat or Dardachat, hence the name of the series, which is all about informally sharing with you our rich Arabic culture and heritage and its in, it, in its various forms. We invite you to share your questions and comments in the comment section, and we will try to respond to them during the chat tonight. So tonight I have the pleasure to be joined by a pianist and writer, Pierre-André Doucet. Hi, Pierre. Hi, Reem. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. Thank you very much for being with us tonight, Pierre. Yeah, it's my pleasure. So Pierre-André and myself, we share the connection to the amazing Fry Festival as he currently is the interim uh, executive director and I sit on the board of directors of the organization. And we also share the passion for music, which is all what we're going to talk about tonight. Uh, Pierre-André holds a doctoral degree from l'Université de Montréal. He was recognized by CBC Radio 2 as one of the best Canadian classical musicians under 30 in 2015. He's the co-artist director of Barachois Summer Music since 2012 as well. So music is a universal language and it is to tonight our pleasure to be sharing with you an amazing ambassador for the Arabic music in Canada, the Canadian Arabic Orchestra. Let's watch this little clip first. Isn't that beautiful? It is, yeah. It is. So um, we will get a chance to explore more of this uh, music tonight. So let's welcome tonight our guest, Wafa al Zaga, CEO and founder of the Canadian Arabic Orchestra. Welcome, Wafa. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Reem, and thank you, Pierre, for uh, uh, this lovely uh, invitation. And I uh, really uh, uh, hope that this program gets to expand more, and uh, I'm, I'm I'm happy to be part of it uh, today for its kickoff. And I'm uh, I'm excited because this is uh, I, our first time meeting with uh, our uh, community in New Brunswick, and I, I hope that will this will be the start of uh, meeting them in person, inshallah, for uh, uh, concerts there in New Brunswick and. Uh, uh, I hope that will come come soon. Hopefully, hopefully, yeah. Thank you, thank you for accepting the invite. We're very thrilled to have you with us tonight. That's my pleasure. So, um, Wafa, like obviously, uh, we want to start to talk a little bit about the uh, uh, orchestra. So, can you tell us a little bit more about uh, when and how was the orchestra established, and what uh, are its objectives? 
So uh, the, the long story short, the Canadian Arabic Orchestra uh, was founded by me, myself, and my uh, my wife, Lamis uh, Aude, uh, the pianist and um, uh, teacher of uh, you know classical Western classical music. And actually, the idea was started back home in, in Jerusalem, where where I met Lamis, and uh, we thought that um, we need to you know to to have something uh, to build bridges between the two different culture that we represent because i am a kanun player and and you know the kanun is um, w you know one of the main instruments in in the arabic music and the piano is the, you know the ambassador of of the western classical music so we thought of you know uh merging our efforts and you know um combine our work to showcase uh the similarities and how beauty to to mix those two cultures uh, hopefully that this will uh you know build on building uh, real bridges between those two different communities so uh, uh we started a, a project back home in, in jerusalem and um the the program was uh, first uh, uh came to life in in the jasmine festival in jerusalem and when we moved to canada by the way lemis is a canadian by by birth and when when we moved to canada we decided to continue our journey and to to start uh, this amazing uh, um, you know project uh, where we uh, combined four or five musicians. We started in 2013, um, just few months after we landed in Canada. We started our first performance, and and it, it you know it received a lot of uh, acceptance from the community and encouragement, uh, which you know make us proud of what we are doing and the goals that we are setting for for this group uh, then we decided to call it the canadian arabic orchestra in order to give you know um the audience a little bit of a, an idea about you know having a, a big group of musicians because um if you are if you say like this is a tacht or a band people will not understand what you are trying to say because it is not a tacht, it, not, it is not a small band, it's a, it's a big group, but in Arab uh, music, there is no term called orchestra. So we decided to move with the, with the name orchestra in order just to give the concept um, some, you know, some understanding mm -hmm. uh, and also to, uh, to send a message that this is an open window for all musicians from any background to be part of it. But the main core of it is to showcase the beauty uh, and the power and the strength of the Arabic music in particular. In 2015, we registered it as a not-for-profit and 2019, uh, we were uh, glad that uh, the orchestra had been accepted as a charity, charitable organization. And from there, um, uh, we did many, many concerts in, in Toronto and the GTA and, uh, you know, in different uh, provinces in uh, Calgary, Edmonton, Halifax, Vancouver, and hopefully soon in New Brunswick. Hopefully, yeah, hopefully, yeah. So you, you mentioned the uh, uh, qanun, which is the instrument you play. It's actually one of my favorite instruments. Could you a little bit talk, uh, talk about this instrument? Because I think not many people are familiar with it. Uh, um, like especially if they're they're not familiar with the Arabic culture, and also about the instruments that the other instruments that are that make up the orchestra. Right. So um, if I will start with the, talking about the kanun, the kanun is a, is, is a string instrument that have been invented by Al Farabi uh, in the ninth century, and um, it was created on the Pythagoras uh, theory uh, of the triangles and the squares. Uh, it has a mathematical background. Um, I think he was trying to m merge his his uh, math knowledge with his passion uh, of music, and he created this wonderful instrument that we uh, believe that it is the base of the piano uh, for these days. Many people, maybe they don't know that the father of the piano is the harpsichord, and the harpsichord has the same sound and uh, feeling uh, uh, of the kanun, but the mechanism is different. I think the the westerns they they wanted to transfer this kind of sound and this music into a, a more uh, simplified mechanical uh, uh, way. That's why they created the keyboard, uh, where you, it, the, the 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 keyboard you know when you press the, the the keys touches the strings. 
using that hammer to, to generate the same sound that you use while you are, you know, playing with your fingers on the on the kanun. And if you go ahead and open the piano, the grand piano, for example, you will see exactly the same shape of the kanun with only one small change is using uh, metal strings instead of the nylon strings, which was actually used in the harpsichord. So the kanun beside the oud are the main instruments that, you know, give the, the personality and the characteristic of Arabic music. However, in the orchestra, because uh, I mentioned, we are trying to, to make this group uh, globalized and invite different uh, kind of uh, musicians. So the orchestra has uh, the kanun, the oud, the violins, definitely, uh, buzuk, uh, cellos, contrabass, uh, nai, clarinet, all the classical Western instrument, we try to make it uh, uh, to serve uh, the Arabic music on the stage and to play some of those uh, um, similar tunes. And sometimes actually we work with our musicians in order to train them to generate those quarter tones that uh, you know uh, uh, are very specific in the Arabic uh, music. Mm -hmm. So uh, the orchestra has around 55 musicians, 25 choir members. The 55 musicians are from all over. We have um, from all the Arab world, from Algeria, uh, Saudi Arabia, Palestine, uh, Lebanon, Egypt, uh, from everywhere. Plus from uh, 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 the other uh, other countries from the, the other world. I mean, uh, uh, from we have people from uh, uh, I, I forgot the the countries, but uh, yeah, from different backgrounds. Um, uh, Non-Arabs, definitely, and they have not been exposed to Arabic music at all. But they liked the sound, and they liked how we present this kind of music, and they decided to join and to be part of, of, of this amazing initiative. Um, well, I'm very, I have so many questions about the orchestra because it's, uh, um, I've traveled a bit in the Arab world, and every time I've gone to performances, I've been very intrigued by um, these these sounds that sound uh, very foreign to me as a Western classical musician, um, but that I'm able to appreciate and the 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 depth and the um, the richness of of the structure and the harmony um, when I um, when I hear it. Um, so I have a lot of questions that I'm going to just pepper you with. Um, how do you go? How do you go about recruiting your musicians? So are they mostly uh, mostly professional musicians, semi-professionals, amateurs, um, and how like who writes your arrangements are, are is there like a, a canon of classical um, Arabic music that that uh, other ensembles elsewhere in the world sort of go to um, as Western orchestras would go to Beethoven or Mozart or, or, or Schumann etc very good questions but but there's I need I need to answer them one by one so yes. uh, for, for the first one, uh, yes, our uh, musicians are professional musicians. Sometimes we open the window for semi-professional musicians to join in order to give them some kind of uh, uh, an experience in order to, you know, to get exposed to such uh, music. And um, definitely the, uh, the recruitment is, is very easy. Uh, most of our musicians are really engaged in the orchestra to the extent that they refer musicians to us to contact us and see if we are in need of uh, uh, of, of their you know services, mm -hmm. so that we don't post, we don't request uh, since the day we started until today. Uh, most of our musicians they came by a referral. They wanted to join, and as I mentioned, we uh, we are promoting it as an open. Uh, orchestra for anybody who would like to join they are welcome definitely we do an interview we we see what they do and we we try to um, make our own due diligence and look after what what, what their experience is uh, but mostly they they come to us and uh, sometimes when we uh, create specific projects that need a specific instrument we go and look for those musicians but mostly through our connections through our musicians who because you know they are exposed to other musicians and they work with different orchestras, uh, for example, Toronto Symphony Orchestra or Mississauga Symphony Orchestra, Guelph Symphony Orchestra. So many of our musicians they actually work 
with those orchestras. And whenever we need a, a musician, we, we just ask them if, if they know somebody and they refer us, we contact them, we do those interviews and, and we run. Uh, uh, you know, the music and the arrangement, it's definitely what we do is we, we bring those classical Arabic uh, tunes and we try to modify them in a way that can fit the orchestral structure. Uh, so we do the arrangements, sometimes me, sometimes Lamis, uh, sometimes my uh, our conductor, Mr. Wanis Mubayid, uh, it, he does those arrangements for you know uh, uh, all the, the group. Uh, these days we are working with professional uh, composers, so they create the arrangement by themselves, they, they deliver uh, the material ready for us uh, based on what we provide them with, you know, the number of musicians and what are the instruments that that will be performing. And the the very nice thing about the Canadian Arab Orchestra, it is that that it is very flexible. So sometimes we go with fifty five musicians, and some concert we don't need that, so we go with five musicians or seven musicians or ten musicians. Okay. Depends on the production and uh, and the need. Uh, uh, sometimes. Depends on the budget uh, because when we travel, for example, when we do the tour, the Canada tour, we travel with 34 musicians, and you know, I I wish we can take more, but it, it is a huge budget and it, it needs a lot of you know uh, uh, financial financial support and uh, um, yeah, th this is it basically. Uh, so so most of it we we do the work uh, and uh, as I mentioned, when we need a specific instrument, or if we need our musicians or those Western musicians to do a specific uh, work that is very related to Arabic uh, tunes, uh, which as I mentioned, include the quarter tones and, and the semitones, we work with them closely. So we practice with them, we we bring them in as small groups, we work on in their parts until they master it. And mm -hmm. um, one, one very lovely thing that happens is, um, and actually, it was one of the goals. Uh, part of the, the Festival of Arabic Music and Arts, which is the orchestra uh, organizes, is we bring uh, artists and composers from the Arab world. For example, we worked with uh, uh, Sharbel Rohan. Sharbel is a very uh, uh, um, uh, organized uh, composer. He worked every, you know, he, he write every single move, every single uh, tune he wants in the piece. And we expose our musicians to work with him directly. Uh, for example, also when they work with Nasir Shama uh, or Marwan Khouri or uh, Ilhan Madfai. So our music, musicians have this um, ability to be exposed to those professional musicians and work with them closely in order to generate the right uh, sounds that we are looking after. Hmm. That's really, it's really fascinating and it's it's so interesting to see how quickly you've been able to build an organization with with um, such breadth and, and such ambition. Um, I'm, I was wondering if you could speak to us maybe about how, um, like what the first few years were like in forming this ensemble, because you could, you don't start an orchestra with 80 musicians overnight and, and everything gets off the ground. So I was wondering if you could talk to us about these, these first few years and, and maybe what the, the biggest challenges were in, in putting this together. Actually, you know, the journey of such project is, is similar to any, any, any project you start with. Always mm. there's a struggle, always there's challenges. But what makes all of this easy is the passion and the belief that we get from the community, from the musicians and from everybody works with the orchestra. So now the orchestra have, have been there for seven years. Um, we feel like we still need to do more steps even to, to, to reach our goal. We did not yet reach our uh, uh, ultimate goal. However, the, the first few years were very hard to, you know, to provide the, the needed funded for, for your projects. And in order to, you know, to bring all these musicians and uh, I think, you know, the logistics wise or the logistics uh, uh, issues are very big you know, to yeah. book a venue and to, to promote such an event where you need a thousand or a thousand two hundred audience to attend your concerts, it needs a lot of funding. And mm -hmm. this is one main issue that, that was um, 
at the beginning. But as I mentioned, the belief that we got and the passionate from the musicians, they, for example, many of them at the beginning, they did not you know, uh, stress on the fees. Uh, they were very lean about that. They did not, for example, ask for their fees in, in advance. They uh, they worked with us, and after you know, we finished those concerts, they get their their fees, and they don't discuss anything about that, even if it's more or less of what we what we were hoping to get. Mm -hmm. So um, yes, uh, have getting into the music scene and, and the Canadian music scene is not easy. You know. Uh, we're trying to reach not only the Arab, uh, you know, audience. Also, we are trying to get non-Arabs to to know about Arabic music and mm. to to come to our concert. You know, try to attract them. Uh, uh, how to promote your event and what are the messages that you send to them in order for them to get jealous and and say, you know what, I want to go and attend this concert. This is something nice. Uh, I want to see what is the Arabic music, especially that we have this uh, static image about Arabs and, um, you know, what the media always promote, terrorists, mm -hmm. killing, always the, we are looking after just, you know, killing each other and, uh, you know, the, the, the media and how, how it promotes Arabs in, in general. So fighting all of that in order to say, no, guys, we have a hundred, sorry, a thousand four hundred years of culture. We have a very rich music and you need to come and attend and see what we have. We have love and our music is uh, is filled with, with love and hope and, and, and happiness. So this is a big challenge in order to be able to reach to those audience and get them to come to you. Uh, but definitely, step by step, uh, insisting and trying and keep trying uh, was the key for us to uh, to be actually been invited by a very famous festival. The Lomenato Festival is one of the largest festival in, in Ontario. Um, mm -hmm. uh, Stratford Festival is one of the biggest festivals. They invited us and we we did the opening and, and it was an amazing, uh, uh, you know, concert to be able to say, yes, we are Arabs, we are part of this community. Mm -hmm. We have something to say. We are not only consumers of culture. We have something to, to bring yeah. to the table and to showcase. And uh, this this brought also bride to our community who felt like, yes, we need to support such initiative because it actually reflects a new image uh, about Arabs and to get people to know us from different angle that the media is always promoting. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, that's really, uh, you know, uh, give us a big push, our musicians as well, uh, especially the, the musicians who are from different backgrounds who come to, to the concert and see how our audience are passionate about this yes, music yeah. and how they, they interact, they, mm -hmm. they, they sing along, they clap. And this is something they don't see. Usually because it is the um, uh, uh, the protocol of the classical music where you need to be sitting in the theater. You can't clap even between the movement. You have to wait mm -hmm. until they finish all of that. So seeing this energy and, and how people are interacting, interacting with this music also give a big push to our musicians and to get them to, you know, bring more and, and put more effort uh, into uh, this work. Speaking of um, uh, what, uh, speaking of the funding and the mus musicians and the fees, one of the challenges that sometimes come to mind when it comes to uh, starting such an organization is, um, and I'm, I'm going to speak a little bit about, although there's a different scale, uh, Arabica here, because it's like a, a little band that we're starting here. One of our biggest challenges has been, for example, dedicating the time, because mm -hmm. most of us are like full-time uh, uh, employees or they have we have our full-time jobs was that one of the challenges also for the orchestra yes may maybe because I was I was the main uh, the main person who are doing that sacrifice I, I don't feel it and I forgot that I did this actually it, it does it, you need to sacrifice when I came I was mm -hmm. you know the general director of the the, 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 the the music conservatory in Jerusalem and coming here you know there is nothing about Arabic music nothing at all uh, so I was, you know, on that um, uh, uh, intersection where whether I need to look for something to feed my family or to mm -hmm. feed my soul. And mm -hmm. I, th and I thought, uh, uh, no, it, it needs to work on both. So um, I was lucky with, uh, you know, having Lamise beside me who dedicated most of her time 
for teaching and to bring food to the table. And I was fully focused on working on the orchestra, make it uh, uh, grow up a little by, uh, sorry, step by step. Uh, it took it took time. It took uh, effort and sacrificing uh, your effort, your time, uh, spending time with my my kids. Uh, I used to work until uh, you know five six in the morning just to get you know because promoting th those events you don't have money to promote it. You have to work on that. You have to create your. For example, I have I, I worked as a graphic designer, as a, a marketing personnel, as a, a accountant. Uh, that helped me a lot now because I know everything and I I, I, I can uh, uh, you know direct my my team to do what I actually wanted them to do because the experience that I got from doing all of that work myself mm -hmm. and definitely uh, by the time the, the orchestra started growing we started bringing people to the team who also dedicate many or, or most of their time to work with the orchestra uh, working in the morning and coming to the meetings and work with us until the orchestra now is is able to to support its its people which is me and the team uh, so we work full time for the orchestra we don't work on any any other other places mm -hmm. okay so um having uh, you mentioned also the marketing uh, part and the uh, marketing aspects um um, I think there's a, a question here about like how how can you market the orchestra in a in a way that feels authentic without feeling kind of exploitative. The 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 main way is through your community. If your community believes in you, mm -hmm. they will support you and they will try to promote your efforts in every single place they are in. So many of the concerts we we got invited is from our audience. Who say you know uh, we have we know the orchestra can you come to do a concert for our organization uh, mm -hmm. they refer uh, their you know teams to to call us uh, most of it in this way and 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 that's what makes it easy for us to get uh, to other uh, you know communities through the referrals from our community who attend our concert or from our musicians who work with us um, so. So this is this is basically the main the main way. Plus, as I mentioned, uh, definitely step by step when you build your database, when you will your 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 audience list and connections, yeah. yeah so you, you will be easier able to you know bring people to come to your uh, to your concerts. Great. Yeah. So uh, you mentioned the uh, FAMA or the Festival of Arabic Music and Arts, which is one of your biggest, biggest events and, and projects. So right. let's see a quick video about this festival and we're going to talk about it. Festival of Arabic Music and Arts. We are ready for the third year. Concerts, art galleries, plays, stand-up comedy, and a special performance by children. 130 artists, 16 events, and over 14,000 audience. Orchestra al Caribbean al Arabi, the Festival of Arabic Music and Arts, La Una Toronto. Fama, I just can't wait. Wow. 
It's uh, such a huge event with a very big variety of activities, uh, obviously. So when, um, when was this festival initiated or started, Wafa? And like how, what, how did it evolve in terms of size and variety of activities? Uh, you're on mute, Wafa. Oh, sorry for that. So, okay. so the festival actually uh, uh, is one of our uh, projects that aim to, to to get to our main goal, which is promoting Arabic music and to build those uh, uh, bridges of understanding between the Arabic music and, and Arab culture and uh, the Western uh, culture. So, uh, we we started this initiative after three years of operating by ourselves, doing our own concerts. So we thought, you know, uh, we need also a hand from our, you know, uh, classical musicians and artists from the Arab world in order to help us in delivering our message. And um, we, we thought to start, uh, you know, bringing musicians from the Arab world in order to showcase uh, uh, different styles of music, different than what we, what we only promote. Uh, um, so we started in 2017 and uh, we started on a s small scale, uh, having just seven concerts. And then year by year now, the, the, the festival uh, uh, invite uh, musicians from all, all of the Arab world for 14 concerts starting from end of October until mid-November. Uh, uh, we do 14 concerts plus the uh, side uh, uh, projects, for example, the galleries who, st who runs all uh, throughout the, the festival, uh, some uh, plays that runs more than one time during you know the festival, two or three times in order to give uh, uh, people chance to come and attend those uh, uh, plays. Uh, show uh, movies uh, that has this uh, um, specific message about culture, about music, about art, about you know, Arabs and how they uh, they have this rich, Culture. So uh, now the festival runs, finished its its fourth uh, round, but unfortunately it was a virtual round. We did it on a small, uh, sorry, small scale, uh, but at least we we wanted to keep in touch with our audience and to you know try to relieve relieve them of you know all this yeah. uh, uh, you know pandemic that happens throughout last year. So we did it on a small scale. But we are uh, happy and ready and uh, trying our our best to 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 be ready for the next round where we'll where we hope to go back uh, uh, in person and, and to bring those artists and musicians uh, yeah. to be with us on the stage. Yeah, honestly, one of the um, the the interesting things about like COVID nineteen, like as a, a silver lining, I would say, is because it pushed you to go virtual. Uh, people like us living in like outside Ontario and Toronto were able to experience some of your activities and events uh, online, which was also a, a plus to us. So thank you for, I'm not gonna say thank you for COVID, but like <laughs> that was kind of a benefit. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's the benefit also for us because uh, we got to know you guys. And uh, I, I heard about Arabica actually um, by looking you know, in, in the social media and you guys are doing a great job and uh, I'm looking forward for, uh, some kind of a collaboration together because we wanted to reach to our community uh, all over Canada. Uh, we tried to start with uh, those spots where we we feel the Arab community is a little bit more condensed. That can, you know, uh, uh, the financial aspect of it can mm -hmm. can be covered. Uh, but definitely, uh, New Brunswick is on the the map, and uh, we hope totally. you know soon we work together and and, and do uh, joint concerts. Yeah, hopefully we look forward to that. So, um, and again, I think one of the things that uh, uh, when I, when we look at the repertoire of the orchestra in general, we see a lot of um, exposure to even even different cultures. So you've tried to uh, create some fusion of music uh, between Arabic and indigenous music and flamingo and Spanish music. Uh, how did the community perceive that kind of a fusion in terms of uh, experience? Uh, if we are talking about the Arab community, because they have that trust in our productions and because they have attended our concert before and they know the level and the quality of music that we bring, so they come with, with no questions. And many of the concerts that, that we we promote, they go sold out even maybe a month or two before the actual concert day. 
uh, for the non, non Arab, it, it, actually, this is the mandate of these productions: is to 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 bring those communities to come and see the similarities between Arabic music and the music that represent them. For example, when we work with the indigenous, we try to inv invite as much indigenous people to come and attend the concert, and we we try to do that merging between the Arabic music and the indigenous, which is something very hard because. You know, and there's just music is, is based on rhythms and, uh, you know, the power of the sound. It does not have this internality or a fixed internality. Uh, so it, it took us a long time to, you know, to, to form this uh, project, but it was very successful and, and we are very happy of the outcomes. For example, the Greek, um, the Greek community were uh, very uh, appreciative of having uh, this collaboration between the, uh, the, the, the orchestra and uh, the Greek musicians. Same with the flamenco, Spanish people, Spanish community. Uh, they attended the concert and they, they were happy and they actually shocked that we share a lot of similarities between Arabic music and uh, flamenco and Spanish music. So mm -hmm. yes, they, they, they like this kind of uh, collaborations and it actually... Uh, uh, bring that uh, concept to life that we are promoting bridges bringing people together uh, building those bridges of understanding and uh, 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 cross cultures mm -hmm. um, a, a point here that comes to mind is the term uh, and sometimes i get asked that question as well is the terms oriental and arabic music so some people they the terms can be used interchangeably sometimes so uh, what would, can you share about like what's the difference between Oriental and Arabic music? Yeah, when you when you when you say Oriental music is uh, you are talking about the whole Orient, which include China, include uh, mm -hmm. other uh, other cultures, India, for example. So, so the term Oriental is a little bit uh, wide than than the, the, the Arabic music. So uh, that's why we try to make sure that our message is is very clear. Um, Actually, many people, they came to us and say, why are you calling it the Canadian Arabic Orchestra? Why not? It should be the Canadian Arab Orchestra. Mm. And we try to, 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 to say that, no, it is not the Canadian Arab Orchestra. It is not Arabic Orchestra. It is a Canadian organization that aims to promote Arabic music. That's mm -hmm. why it is the Canadian Arabic Orchestra. Uh, so those terms can can you know can get different faces, and we try to make sure that the correct message uh, uh, delivered to to the audience and to uh, you know to the public. Mm. That, this is great, and I like uh, also one of the things that we've noticed in some of your activities is um, that sometimes you also blend uh, your the music with ev even other forms of Arab uh, arts and culture, like calligraphy. Uh, also, you try to uh, cater. Uh, for uh, in multicultural celebrations, like even bringing a, a, around different uh, bands or dance troops uh, from around the world. So, um, uh, the, the, how did you feel that resonated with uh, with both Canadian and Arabic? I guess it's it's well, all, um, more more or less the building bridges, as you mentioned. But which kind of, if you think about all of the activities you've been doing, which ones you felt were like the most interesting for for the Canadian and the non like the Arabic? community yeah if, if we are talking about the, the the community as a community definitely the multicultural folk celebration is one of the biggest uh, events that they they enjoy because uh, they get to see different cultures different folk groups come together performing under one umbrella which is the multicultural folk celebration uh, uh, they they got to see uh, this you know these cultures coming um, uh, you know to perform for them and this is something they have not experienced before, especially that we focus fully on the music because many, many organizations, they do festivals. And when, when you talk about festival, you are talking about food and maybe mm -hmm. uh, some selling of uh, merchandise or crafts, know, and, yeah. crafts and do different activities. However, the multicultural folk celebration is fully dedicated for music and only music. When I say music, definitely dance is, is part of it. Um, so this is very important uh, project that we do in the summer, every summer since 2018. 
uh, we, we bring those different uh, cultures together and they perform together. They work sometimes uh, together uh, on one uh, joint production uh, with, which people are, you know, get, get to know each other, especially that uh, people who attend, not only Arabs, people from those cultures, from, for, for example, the Greek, for uh, the, the indigenous, the Chinese, the Serbians, the uh, Afghani. So all of them come together to watch their group to perform when they are performing. And, you know, by I default, they see, yeah, by, by default, they see the other performances. Musical wise, I'm, I'm proud of the, the, the tour that we do because mm -hmm. we do our own music, the Canadian Arabic Orchestra music. Uh, we were take our team and musicians and choir to tour and showcase our richness and our culture to the Arab community in different cities and different provinces. Uh, but at the end, the biggest and the largest project is the festival where, you know, you bring yeah. musicians and artists from all over the world uh, to work with us as an orchestra. Sometimes they don't. Sometimes they bring their own bands and work with with their own musicians but definitely showing case the, the arabic music is the goal and uh, in whatever form we we are happy with it for example uh, 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 nasir uh, uh, he chose his musicians to, to to participate we we brought musicians from vancouver to work with him uh, mm -hmm. for example three uh, sorry four uh, syrian guitarists who worked with him uh, on a very uh, exciting project and and it was an amazing production that the people they they enjoyed and and liked okay. mm -hmm. so um wafa you present i mean you must be working all day every day if you're presenting not only a festival but also a series of concerts in toronto you're organizing tours um i've been told also that you um you founded the the um uh, a, a conservatory to teach uh, Arab music uh, through the orchestra, or, or I'm assuming with orchestra members. Um, how how does that work? Are you teaching mostly to uh, younger students, to adults, um, and and uh, you know what role do you think that plays uh, within your organization, but also within the community? So one of one of the goals is the education, and our goals is educate the audience. And actually, uh, at the start and until now, uh, when we go and do our own productions, we try to talk about the music. What mm -hmm. is the forms that we use? What is the longa? What is the samai? What is this rhythm? What is this maqam? And why we use it there? And sometimes a small story about why the the composer wrote this specific music and what what is the story behind that so the educational part is uh, is very important in in our performances but we wanted to take it to a different level and actually uh, one of the main things that you need to sustain your your project is to to feed it with new bloods and new new musicians and what is more uh, easy and lovely uh, uh, other than bringing uh, musicians from young generations from your community uh, and actually other communities who, who would love to get exposed to Arabic music and to teach them the way you want them to be trained because n not all of musicians in the Arab world they perform the classical music they sometimes they have they are you know turned to a hip hop or a jazz or but you need uh, those classical musicians to be present at any time and actually uh, those seeds now are forming um, the Canadian Arabic Youth Orchestra which is uh, a, a part of the Canadian Arabic Conservatory which is we started in 2016 uh, as I mentioned to to feed the orchestra with new blood with people who uh, trained uh, under our supervision our musician supervision and our vision for them uh, to, to be trained as a classical Arabic musician Mm -hmm. uh, so we have now around 200 uh, students from wow. different uh, backgrounds, from different age uh, uh, categories. We have uh, I'm students. One. I'm one, actually. Oh. <laughs> it was a pleasure for I was, us I to have you. I was taking vocal, vocal training lessons like for at some point in time, yeah. Right. Okay. And actually, not only in Toronto, we have... Uh, as uh, Reem, uh, one example uh, from New, New Brunswick, we have a student from Saudi Arabia, we have from the US, we have students from uh, Calgary, uh, Ottawa and Montreal. So um, 
it, it was a great uh, uh, achievement with the conservatory, uh, especially that you are uh, showing the people that um, uh, Western instrument can be dedicated to work for the Arabic uh, music yeah. as well. And people, they, they, like, they like that because they want their kids to learn piano, but they want them to play Arabic tunes. You yes. know? Nobody offer this uh, uh, type of, uh, you know, training in, at least in, 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 in yeah. Toronto or Ontario uh, or guitar. They, they don't have that uh, uh, in any uh, uh, music school here in, in Ontario, for example. Uh, so we have a, a niche market that nobody has, and, and, and people are very interested, especially uh, when you talk with the parents. They say, you know what, I want my kids to, to, to inherit their culture, to stay in touch with their art, with their music. And seeing people uh, uh, 10 years old uh, singing Uncle um, uh, Thum in Ta'umri or Alf Layla Layla, what a joy. Uh, it's you know, um, this is real classic, classic, classic songs. Like, yeah. Exactly. Uh, once before we started, the, we started the, the school, I went with Lamise to, um, to uh, what they call, it? I think, uh, talent show in one of my kids' school. And I, I was looking at the audience and most of them are Arabs, you know, many of them are Arabs. And when you look at stage, people from China, they, they play their own, you know, uh, folkloric instruments mm -hmm. uh, Indian people they bring their own uh, instruments the sitar or whatever it is uh, the western uh, uh, students they bring the clarinet and the violin but you look most of the audience are Arabs so where where we have Oud we have Kanun we have where all of those and that was basically the uh, another motivator for us to start this initiative and now we see our uh, kids perform their sorry our students perform in those talent shows bring their kanun bring their oud and people start to asking them those questions oh my god what is this instrument how you play it that and they come to us and say oh uh, what are they ask about the parents are very happy with that because they see the reflection of the culture and uh, and the music on their kids which is something they wanted uh, their kids to have plus Definitely to get them uh, mixed with other, uh, you know, music sure. cultures. Uh, so we say, yes, we want our kids to know hip hop, to know Western classical music, uh, uh, jazz or whatever. But also we want them to have their music present in their personality and their, uh, uh, their identity when they talk about themselves. And this is a plus for them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it sounds like a terrific project. And uh, I'm curious to know, you say you have um, students that, that come from many different age groups, from many uh, different ethnic communities as well, not, not only Arab musicians or Arab students, but also students from other uh, ethnic communities. Do you find that there are any particular challenges in, in uh, teaching Arab music to non-Arab uh, people? Uh, I don't think so. Uh, there is any because uh, what happens is the, the Arab musicians they try to uh, uh, put the Arabic music theories in, in particular into the uh, the Western forms, mm. uh, which, which was uh, I, I don't want to say something good, but it's not bad because one of the strength of Arabic music is it is wide. It does not have rules. Then there is a uh, very small basic. Uh, uh, you know, basics there, mm -hmm. but the the beauty and the strength of Arabic music is because it is wide. What you feel um, uh, give you this mood, maybe give me different mood. You understand it in a way, I understand it in a different way. And that's why it is wide and rich and people, they look at it from many different angles. The, um, so put it in, in a, for example, scale. The maqam is not a scale. If we talk about the, the maqams, but in order for us to communicate the music with uh, non-Arabs, uh, mm -hmm. especially people who are coming from educational back, uh, background, for example, from uh, a Western classical background, Western, right? yes, Western yeah. uh, classical background. I have a student uh, recently joined uh, my class in theory, and and he is um, uh, Western uh, uh, classical Western uh, music trained. Mm -hmm. uh, 
And when I start talking about, you always say, oh, oh this is similar to this. Or I say, yes, but we have it, a different definition for it. We use it in a different way. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, I, I'm not gonna say there's uh, um, problems, but you know, get people to to hear the, the quarter tones and to uh, uh, mm -hmm. recognize them between the, because for, the, for them it's, it's weird. Um, of course, we're, we're, it, as Western classical musicians, we're not trained to hear that, or we're trained to hear exactly quarter tone, but we're trained to understand that that's off, and that we have to correct it to the semitone above or below. Exactly, especially when they you know. yeah when they play an instrument, they say, "Oh no, this is when I do a mistake. I do this." Is it yes. okay? So, so this is it. I wanted to do the mistake because this is is the correct. Uh, uh, intonality uh, for for the, the Arabic mm -hmm. music. So uh, um, and 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 people get fascinated by Arabic music because when they see how wide it is and how um, it, it can have different faces. Uh, when I when I describe to them, for example, the, 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 uh, <laughs> it's okay. When when I describe to them the Arabic scale and how how do we have nine different. Uh, uh, tones inside one uh, one note. Uh, so how how that come? How how can you recognize those different uh, uh, tones? And I say it is by by training, and it gives different colors, different moods. Uh, it's not only the basic moods: the happiness, the sadness, the excitement. There is there are many different uh, moods that Arabic music can give the audience uh, while using those uh quarter or semitones that we we use mm -hmm. mm. interesting thank you um I, I guess like the video kind of scooped what I wanted to ask about. It's just the, the Canada tour. You mentioned the Canada tour, yep. which uh, is definitely uh, an interesting way of uh, bringing your own uh, uh, production, kind of your own work to different parts around uh, uh, around Canada. I'm just going to share this little video for people to get a sense of what you're talking about here. Very short video. It has uh, lots of richness in it. Uh, hopefully, New Brunswick would be added uh, at one point in time. Inshallah, <laughs> soon. Kind of the tour, uh, yeah. hopefully. So, um, reflecting on all of this, uh, um, Wafa, what are the avenues for the orchestra? Like, what are the plans in the future? Um, there's for us, as I mentioned, the limitation is the sky. Uh, we don't have limits on to do anything. So, we started a new project now. Uh, to build our own uh, home uh, uh, um, building, which will uh, have three different uh, big size uh, venues, uh, 1,500 seats, 800 th seats, mm -hmm. and, and 500 seats, because we have uh, a little bit of a challenge because the, the community here is growing very fast uh, and uh, there's not enough facil uh, facilities that can host all of our uh, productions and events. And that's why we decided to go and build our own uh, building. Uh, it's going to be a, a very huge uh, project that will take uh, around seven to ten years until it, it comes to life. Uh, we hope also to copy this uh, uh, this building to different provinces, different uh, cities, uh, which which will take a lot of time and, and effort. Also, we have been invited um, to go uh, in a tour to the Middle East. Uh, Expo mm -hmm. uh, Dubai 2020 was, we were um, uh, planning to, to attend there. We have been invited by the Canadian Embassy and different um, 
countries in the Middle East, uh, but you know, uh, the main was uh, being part of uh, Expo uh, because they like the concept of merging the Arabic music with the indigenous and they want to showcase this mm -hmm. beautiful uh, merge between those uh, two cultures. So we were um, uh, invited to be part of it. It was, you know, postponed because because of the pandemic, unfortunately. But now we are uh, reinitiating the uh, the wheel, and uh, we have been contacted by the organizer, the organizers uh, who represent the Arab, uh, sorry, the Canadian uh, government. Uh, and we hope we will be part of that uh, amazing event soon. As I mentioned, we uh, have been invited by Qartaj uh, in Tunisia. Uh, we have been invited to to perform in Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, Oman, and Jordan. Uh, so hopefully this will take place in December uh, this year. Um, definitely uh, having a, a, what I what I gonna call it is um, subdivision of the orchestra in in different provinces because uh, unfortunately because it, it we have we get many calls from musicians who wanted to participate and be part of the orchestra but we know the the barriers. You know, traveling from Vancouver to come and attend the rehearsal is not, you know, ideal. So we decided to create a, 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 a sub, yes, a, a subdivision of the orchestra in those cities in order to give opportunity for those talented musicians to be part of the orchestra, but to join on, you know, on their soil and 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 to be present in in their provinces uh, and to represent Arabic music there, where at some point all members. Hopefully, we'll work together on a one big production that showcases Arabic music from uh, and and musicians from all over uh, all over Canada. Uh, definitely, uh, as I mentioned, there is a lot of uh, projects. One of them is um, uh, uh, we wanted to create a hub for the uh, scholars, anybody who wanted to know something about Arabic music, uh, anybody who wants to study uh, history, theory, wanted to know, uh, 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 you know, many people, they do their research on Arabs and Arabic music. So uh, they can't travel to the Middle East or maybe they fear they have, you know, issues traveling to there. We wanted to bring this here and, and get uh, uh, access to those people who wanted to know more about Arabic music. I do many cultures and uh, sorry lectures. For example, I did um, in Toronto University uh, with uh, uh, Ottawa University, uh, Montreal University. They they they, uh, they asked me for lectures, but we wanted to create a hub for anybody to uh, wanted to know more about Arabic music and even to communicate with scholars from the Arab world. They find all of this present uh, in between their hands on the Canadian uh, land. Um, uh, what are you? Uh, there, there's a lot of uh, projects that we do. The new productions, for example, we are working with Saad Bushnag, is a uh, Arab Canadian mm. composer, uh, to create a production called Cindy Bach. Uh, oh. you know, talking wow. about the journey of Cindy Bad and Bach music. So it's a wow. fascinating project. She's she's working on that. Uh, there's a production called Mishwar Umar. Uh, we are bringing. Uh, Fayrouz productions in a in a way to showcase the journey of humans, how they, you know, because that's very Fayruz, interesting. Yeah, Fayrouz, she did a lot of songs uh, talking about you know uh, love, uh, hatred, uh, um, uh, immigration, uh, war, all of that. Yeah. Uh, so this is a production that we have. Uh, uh, our colleague Heba uh, is from Montreal. She's working on on this production. Uh, we have a production called Opera Arabia. We are inviting uh, uh, Julie Nasrallah, is a Arab Lebanese Canadian uh, uh, opera singer. Uh, she's very well known here in in, in Toronto and in, in Ontario. Uh, she's going to work with us on a production that presents Arab opera with the Western opera. So there's a lot. We, we, we as as Pierre mentioned, we right. work every single day. We try. Even in the pandemic, we did not stop. We 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 are preparing ourselves to go back with a new productions and new work for our audience. That's great. That's great. Mm. Yeah, it's, it's really fascinating to hear hear you talk, and very, um, <laughs> it's very encouraging to hear musicians talking with such passion about what they're doing, even in the midst of this pandemic. Because uh, I I know that um, it's been it's been hard to keep that enthusiasm and that passion up 
for a year of being virtual. So it's it's so wonderful to hear you talk with such enthusiasm and such love for what you do. You know why? Because actually, when you see the happiness in, in your audience eyes, and you miss that, yeah. you know, we are, as a musicians, you get your energy, your power from your audience. When you are on stage, when they clap to you, when, when they look at you and they are happy or smiling or, or the, you know, or singing along with you. So th this energy we miss. And mm -hmm. that's why we are looking forward to meet with our audience again, back again soon. And that's why we try uh, also to keep up with the level of um, music that we bring to them and to bring them uh, all new things that they will be proud of and happy to, to, to attend. Mm. Yeah. So I'm, I'm curious to know, Wafah, what can, um, what can non-Arab Canadian institutions do to, to help your, to help this project and to help this organization um, keep expanding and, and keep uh, sharing Arab music with non-Arab audiences throughout the country? Uh, part of our work is to build those uh, partnerships with uh, uh, with different institutions, not not only Arab institutions, uh, mm -hmm. who uh, you know either promote our uh, events or we invite them to to come to our events. Um, many of them uh, uh, they offer uh, you know us to come and perform uh, for their uh, you know for their uh, communities. Mm -hmm. um, um, you know, th there's a lot of, of work that that uh, that we do, uh, but you know, we are not a big staff. Uh, this is also a, a challenge. We are not a big staff that that work on all of that. And uh, as I mentioned, there is a lot of avenues to to, to build those partnerships and and uh, to, to try to work with different organizations. Uh, the the cultural and the artistic uh, institutions it's easy for you to work with because you always have ideas about you know uh, working together on on semi productions on emerging productions uh, definitely I I would also m mention that many of our uh, funding we receive from non Arab uh, institutions for example uh, OCAF Ontario Art Council uh, Canada Con Canada Council for the Arts Canadian Heritage uh, Toronto Art Council uh, uh, foundations, uh, Mississauga Foundation, for example. Uh, uh, there's also um, Hamilton Foundation, uh, Burlington Foundation. So all all of those are non-Arab uh, organizations who uh, believed in in our mission and they saw the value of building those bridges of understanding between the Arab community and the non-Arab community, especially with. Uh, with what's happening now in the news. You know, there's a, a lot of uh, hatred crimes. Uh, the other day, four people in London, Ontario, have been killed because just because they are they look Muslims or, or they, they wear specific costumes, right? Uh, some of them, they have been attacked in, in a mosque in, 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 in Montreal. So um, non-Arab organizations, they know uh, uh, the strength of music and how it can bring people together and, and get them to, to talk and to see each other. And what a wonderful way to do that um, other than uh, attending a concert that can bring different cultures together, different music together. So uh, yes, we, we get that support, but definitely um, if we wanna reach more audience, we need to work with more organizations. We need to communicate with them. That's why this year we started a, a position in the orchestra uh, uh, for one of our colleagues to start and initiate these uh, contacts with non-Arab organization and let mm -hmm. them know about the orchestra and what we do and how we do it and why we do it and the value of doing it. So um, many of them are interacting very uh, nicely and they like uh, uh, what we do and they are willing to participate and be part of our efforts. This is great. Uh, as you mentioned, and I think one of also our friends, uh, Najwa Al-Qasim, mentioned it in one of the comments, building bridges with music. It's it's wonderful. It's this universal language that brings everyone together. And um, the time really passed by. It, it really flew very quickly. We didn't feel it uh, tonight. And um, thank you really, Wafa, for this wonderful uh, um, evening. We, uh, we really enjoyed learning about the orchestra. And thanks for mm -hmm. being part of our first uh, um, Dardashat. Uh, I also would like to thank Pierre-André for co-hosting with me today. Uh, your questions were very enriching. Uh, 
for the session uh, with your impressive musical expertise and experience. Uh, thank you, Pierre André. Well, uh, and also, I'd like to certainly thank um, each and everyone who joined us live today and all those who will watch the recording uh, late, later. Um, and at the end, I, I'm going to just leave uh, maybe one, uh, like a, a word from each one of you, if you want to share something with the audience before I close with a little video to give a sense of one of the amazing performances by the Canadian Arabic Orchestra. So for me, I, I really enjoyed this uh, uh, this meeting, and I'm, I'm glad that Reem, uh, you chose me to be uh, the opening uh, uh, in your uh, new project, and I wish you guys all the uh, the good luck. Um, and Pierre, thank you for really for a, a nice uh, meeting you and. Uh, nice, nice questions that that you asked and I, I actually look forward to work with you hopefully we can get to work together uh, in some form um, as I mentioned I'm proud of any initiative uh, that promote Arabic music or Arabic culture so uh, Reem uh, please let us um, keep the communication and try to find a, a way to work together uh, in order to bring this wonderful culture to 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 life and to uh, our audience Thank you so much for a lovely meeting. And I encourage everybody who wants to know more about the orchestra to visit us at the Canadian Arabic Orchestra website or social media. They are more than welcome. Yeah, thank yeah. you. Inshallah, yeah. we can keep this conversation going. And uh, thank you also, Reem, for, for inviting me to, to co-host. Uh, at Barasha Summer Music, we're very invested in, in trying to expand the definition of what uh, classical music is uh, and, and sort of take it out of the the confines of the the Western gaze um, and and Western culture, and so we're we're really interested in pursuing this conversation and uh, and uh, hearing more Arab music, hopefully in New Brunswick very soon. Yeah, hopefully uh, the Arab Cultural Club is that's our our mission and our objective. So uh, uh, bringing uh, different uh, partners around the table, hopefully creating those kind of partnerships is what we're going to be aiming for. So at the end, I'd like to leave uh, everyone with an amazing piece by the uh, Canadian Arabic Orchestra.